Welcome back to Anderton's TV and another episode of It's All About the Bass, uh, a new fishing show that uh, we'll be doing every week. My name's Lee. I'm Nathan. And uh, just for shits and giggles this week, we are looking at a couple of cool pedals. Uh, one from MXR, which is the Bass Envelope Filter. Uh, <coughs> you can't stop saying bass. I know, this is it. I'm, I'm so much more interested in doing a fishing show than a music one. Um, so yes, no, a bass envelope filter and also uh, a, a rather excellent drive pedal for you bass players out there uh, called the Amp Tweaker Tight Drive for Bass. So we're going to look at them independently and then together. But <coughs> Nathan, what have you got? What have you come armed with this week? Okay, well here I have a, a beautiful... Uh, Fender Jazz Bass, uh, it's about 1981 I believe this one, so it's a bit of a vintage model. A vintage? Quite, yeah, sort of early, quite an early Japanese uh, Jazz Bass. Chunky uh, old slab of ash or alder or something there. Yeah, yeah. It's and a, it's a, it's every, a, everything, sort of 70s inspired isn't it, with the block inlays and <coughs> the bound neck. Very much so, so it's a lovely bass. And then we're going through um, a Mark Bass Combo. Uh, Mark Bass Combo Head 2. Awesome, which you are hearing DI'd. Um, oh yeah. So, let's start with the bass filter. Yeah. Um, do you want to sort of tell the, tell the, the chaps on the TV, uh, what, what, what is a bass filter essentially? Okay, well, uh, this is a bass envelope filter and it's, it's a bit like a wah pedal, if you can imagine that, because uh, it's kind of messing with the sort of mid frequencies, only this, is, this does it automatically. So you don't have to, you know, keep messing around with your foot, and it's all—it kind of sounds a little bit funkier. It's a bit—it's got more of a quack to it, uh, because you can alter the amount of uh, time that it takes to do the whole sort of wild process. Yeah. Um, so, I guess. Well, if you have, a, do you want to have a quick yeah, listen? Yeah. I mean, I guess the, the the big difference between this and a regular wah is is it's um, it's it's attack sensitive, isn't it? So it's uh, the, yes. The, the harder you pick, yes. The, the the more it will sort of simulate you doing that with a wah pedal, Brilliant. and the softer you pick, the kind of uh, you can set it so it has no effect, or you perhaps just get like a little wah. But that's why I think that the funk players kind of love it because as you sort of get into that sort of funk groove, you can really get the wah timed in nicely with uh -huh. your with your vibe. Sure. Um, but yeah, so. Um, have a little bit of a play. What I'll do whilst you're playing yep. is I'll I'll fiddle with the controls and okay. just <coughs> just quickly. What's nice on this is we've got a, a dry and a wet mix. So you know if you kind of want the 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 the, uh, the envelope filter to, to sort of be a subtle kind of thing, not necessarily swamping your dry sound, we mm. can we can do that, or we can go the other way. And then decay, cue, and sensitivity are what's actually changing. The, the the way it was effectively how much and how sensitive and things like that so whilst you're playing something suitably funky, so, suitably I, will, funky right? I will fiddle with the knobs and people on close-up cam hello oh you can't see me hello uh, we'll see what I'm doing so let's go let's get funky <laughs> Who 
who's kind of a who's kind of a, like a famous bass player-y kind of riff thing that you think the sort of the envelope filter is an integral part of that sound? Well, I, I guess traditionally you this puts me in mind of something like Larry Graham, right? Uh, and kind of early, yeah. Well, he was in Sly and the Family Stone originally, and then he had his own band, uh, Graham Central Station. And I think this is kind of his sound. It's very much a, a sort of late 60s, 70s funk. Is it, is it that sort of Bootsy Collins? Parliament Bootsy Collins, vibe, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, 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 absolutely. Um, but not yeah. not so much the sort of James Brown thing, more just like the the Parliament. No, sort of because I, well, funk the technology wouldn't band. have been there when Bootsy was playing with oh, James I bet Brown. You never know. It might have been. That's a good question. You can answer that in the comments section below. I wonder when who invented the bass envelope filter first. Because the wah is like one of the oldest effects in the book. So right. I'm guessing this is just sort of, I don't know, who knows? But it, um, write him. Yes. Write him and tell us. On a postcard, you're showing your age there now. This is, this is the 27th a stamped, century. A stamped can, addressed envelope. You can just comment below or send a postcard. Um, what do we have to say? What's the disclaimer? We, we, we may not be able to read them all out and cannot return them to you. Uh, or anything. Did you in fact, we won't read any of them. How we'll return gutted them. were you in your, when you were a kid? Tony Hart, you know he used to do his little, yeah. and you used to have to draw like something and you could send it in. I must have sent him about 15 hand-drawn uh, things of Paddington Bear and he, nev and he never once <laughs> Why showed did you it. Do that? He never once showed it. I was heartbroken <laughs> as a seven-year-old child. I think it's probably why I gave up art at school and, you know. And oh man, that's and really sad. Stuff. So yeah, there we are. So anyway, so go, give us some Larry Graham Kind of, uh, yeah, you know, a bit of something. bootsy, a bit yeah, of bootsy, what, that, maybe. Yeah, let, let's, let's get that funk sound thing going. You know, what would be a cool riff? Well, I suppose uh, I kind of. It does sound super, super funky. So that's the MXR uh, bass envelope filter, and I'll put a link in the description section below where you can find out more about that pedal. Um, there are several manufacturers that make bass envelope filters, but you know the MXR one is definitely a good one. Um, you can also use it actually for regular guitar if you want. Just to you know, you want that kind of classic kind of effect. I've heard it sounds very good with regular yes, guitar. Yes, on, on reliably informed. Anyway, let's go over to a drive pedal. <coughs> drive pedal now. Um, Amp Tweaker, pretty sort of top end pedally stuff, made in the USA by a man who knows game. Um, his name is James Brown. I, do, do you like the, the synergy? We've gone from <laughs> we've gone from kind of like you know James Brown's bass player to a guy called James Brown. It's not the same James Brown. Um, he was the head man at uh, PV <coughs> whilst the 5150 was being designed, you know, that sort of iconic high gain uh, Van Halen amplifier. Right. So he makes a range of pedals, of which a couple of them are for bass. Now, I'm not, and I don't know about yourself, I'm not a big lover of the fuzz when it comes to bass. Mm. <coughs> and a lot of bass distortion pedals are fuzz orientated. I don't, I don't know if you've got, um, you tend, what you tend to find with fuzz pedals is, is they keep the, the wet and the dry signal quite sort of separate and you almost, it almost sounds like you've got two sounds coming out. You've got this sort of clean bass sound with a, an overlaid sort of fuzz. Yeah. Um, this is a, this is a drive pedal more in, in the sense of a, you know, like a, a drive circuit in a guitar amp would be so that, so there's no sort of wet dry vibe to it. Well, actually there is on this cause there's a sort of a mod circuit that I'll tell you about in a minute. But so this is a more conventional sort of drive sound. So again, whilst Nathan is playing, I'll get some tones and then you can kind of give us your thoughts on what sort of styles of music this would work for or whatever. And then we're going to combine the two just for fun. Okay. Um, so here we go. Here's our clean sound. Um, the, here comes the, uh, the bass tight drive pedal.
it's it's a more subtle effect than a guitar amplifier kind of drive sound would be. Yeah, and I think it needs to be with the bass too. Uh, you know, because it, yeah, otherwise it's just a hideous noise. <laughs> <laughs> what would you? I mean, again, what what kind of what's a, an iconic bass riff that's you know you sort of go wouldn't work if it wasn't distorted. The, the first thing that springs to mind, just while you were playing around yeah. with that, uh, would be the Stranglers, I think. Yes, you know absolutely. What I mean? what's, the, what's the classic Strangler song? A pick would be useful. At Peaches. This point. Down, down, down. Oh yeah, okay. Uh, Is that Peaches? Have I made that up? Peaches down, 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 down. or Beaches? Something about Peaches and Peaches. Beaches and Beaches. Um, do you should... know that the, the the urban myth I heard on that was that uh, to get his distorted sound uh, back in the day, he used to razor blade all the speakers on the amplifier, oh, and, it, and that's what uh, that's what would give it that kind of flappy, dirty, distorted well, that, sound. Kids, that's rock and roll. Uh, so don't do that to your really expensive new bass amp. As uh, I much much uh, more sensible to buy a distortion pedal to, to do it for you. <laughs> um, well, look, let's hear what that riff would sound like without distortion and then we'll do it with distortion and you can kind of I think we'll get the general impression of that would never have become such an iconic sort of bass line had it not been for that sort of dirty sound so okay yeah yeah let's try that uh, so clean yeah That's about it, isn't it? I think that's how it goes. Let's do it again. Forgive me if it's not. I think it's roughly, it sounded about right to me. <laughs> Let's go. Yeah? Yeah. That's happening. It's, it's definitely got that sort of grind to it. Let me tell you about some of the knobs and buttons on the pedal. Um, it's pretty obvious, actually. Three of the, the knobs are pretty obvious. Volume, tone, and gain are doing exactly what you might uh, think they would. Uh, and then it kind of has almost two contrasting uh, knobs on it. The, the, the name of the pedal is the tight drive, and so it has a tightness control, which is almost like a bass roll-off control. Let me give you an, an example of, of how that sounds. So here we go. It's almost like a focus. Yes. It kind of focuses the, the sound. Do you yeah. know what I mean? So I'm wondering whether or not with, with high gain at high volume, whether or not it's just, you know, it can become a bit overbearing and, and it's useful to have that sort of tightness control, just as you say, to sort of focus it. Yeah. However, on the modded version of the, the bass tight drive, which is what we've got here, um, there is uh, uh, this control on the top that has no name, the control that does no name, um, <laughs> reintroduces uh, the low end dry signal to the mix. So kind of, as I said, it's almost like contrary to what the tightness control is doing. But if you're feeling like you just need to get uh, the bass end back in, but without the dirt on it. Yeah, I can see why that would be really useful too, because very often with, with these pedals and the bass, you know, you kick the pedal in, and it kind of just loses all your, your whole sound, just, your tone just disappears. Yeah. What, the you know? clarity of it, you mean? Well, no, just, just the guts, all the right. guts just kind of falls away from it. Um, and I think that's what he's realised with this. Uh, because if we, if we try it now, you'll yeah. see that, um, you know, any, any sort of uh, guts uh, that you might lose from the bass, you can kind of, you, you can kind of dial <coughs> back in with this button. Well, let me, I'll put it all on kind of halfway, sort of everything on 12 o'clock, and then we'll just dial this, this control in. So here we go. Let's, doing exactly that. Yes, there's a lot of trouser flapping going on in here at the moment. That's, um, that's good, man. It's good. Yeah. Uh, one of the other cool things that, that um, are on all the Pro Series of Amp Tweaker pedals is the pedals have an effects loop built into them. Uh, the idea being that you can loop another chain of pedals, if you like, through the effects loop on this, and then either, depending on how you set the pedal, toggle between the drive pedal and whatever you've got through the effects loop. So if you like, as you switch this off, it switches what the effects loop in and vice versa. So if you, I don't know if you've got two different drive pedals that you want to switch between, instead of having to tap dance on two, mm -hmm. you can just have the second drive pedal through here. And 
uh, toggle between them. Or the other mode that you set it in is that actually when you switch this pedal on, it engages what's ever in the effects loop. So if you need uh, delay, for example, mm. always to come on with your drive sound, again, you can just loop a delay pedal through here and switch cool. it on. Yeah. Kind of a pro feature that I'm guessing, you know, not everybody's gonna use, but I quite like, I've not seen it done on other pedals either. So, just for fun, at the end as well, I thought if we put the two on together mm. and try and get some sort of dirty punk funk, what would punk and funk be? Perfunk. Would, it, would the P <laughs> become silent? I think the P becomes silent in perfunk, doesn't it? But whatever. It shouldn't be. It shouldn't be. Yeah. No. Well, let's do let's let's do perfunk. Okay. Um, so well, yeah. Pick away. I don't know. Just be be dirty and funky at the same time. All right. I'll leave my pick out. All right. You never know. Right. Dirty and funky at the same time. I think so. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> Was that dirty and I like funky? That. I kind of like that. I think you started a new genre. You started a new <laughs> genre. Well, look. Um, oh, yeah, what? Drunk. Drunk. Maybe that's what we'll call it. Dirty and funky. Drunky. So, as always, at the end of uh, the All About the Bass show, we're going to have a little jam. I'm going to introduce now, uh, I'm stepping out. Uh, I'm going to introduce everybody's favourite Danish guitarist, Soren Andersen. No, actually, yes, he is everyone's favourite Danish uh, guitar player. We've got everyone's second favourite Danish guitar player here. Uh, Pete Hanore is going to come and jam. I don't know where it's going to go. Hopefully some more dirty funk. <laughs> but for now, I've been Lee. I'm Nathan. And uh, we'll see you next time on All About the Bass.